Really great to see everybody this morning. Beautiful morning. And um, it's just been a delight to be able to go through this This Is Us uh, series. And uh, today marks the conclusion of it, but uh, it will just be the conclusion of the preaching. It's ongoing in terms of uh, the things that we are about. So it's just been a real privilege to walk through this. Uh, this month. And I want to just thank Paul Hildebrand so much for that uh, very straightforward and clear uh, message of the good news this morning. Um, That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, And so I'm just very grateful for that. And I'll probably reference his message a time or two today. Um, As we talk about This Is Us, I want to just call your attention to this piece that you have in your bulletins today. This is a great uh, piece that you can take and uh, put somewhere where you can remember to pray for this place, and you can remember to ponder about what is my place in this place, what how, what is my role in terms of uh, uh, how I jump in and participate. So uh, thanks to all who put this together, but uh, put this somewhere, don't throw it away, put it somewhere where you can uh, keep track of it and... Uh, continue to lift up Fellowship Bible Church in your prayers. Uh, For those of you who might not have been here uh, as regularly this month, and the weather's had something to do with that, I know, um, I want to just do a quick review of the things that we've talked about. So the first uh, question that we've asked is, who are we? We're doing four questions. I'm a simple, really pretty simple framework kind of a guy And one of the best ways of, um, or one of the best ingredients of engaging with the Word of God is to ask questions of it. Um, God can hold up to the questions, and so just asking questions about uh, the Scriptures. So the first is, who are we? And I'm, I'm happy to say as we'll get into this that the Scriptures give us these answers. The second is, what do we do? What do we do? The third is, how do we do it? And today, we'll spend more extended time considering the last question of where are we going? But let me do a quick review of these first three questions. Who are we? Well, Scripture talks about the body of Christ being a growing thing, uh, growing up into our head, Jesus Christ, it talks about in Ephesians 4. So we are God's growing church family and we're proclaimers. What you saw and heard Paul Hildebrand do today was a perfect example of that and would work in any good conversation uh, to be able to talk through that. Didn't you like how he gave some real easy-to-follow examples? Um, We're proclaimers of the good news of Jesus, and all of this is for God's glory. We're not doing this to try and rack up glory points for ourselves. We're doing it to point people to the head of the church, Jesus, for the glory of God. So that's who we are. What is it we do? Well, in the present tense, we are engaging God's truth, pursuing life together, and sharing hope in Christ. Engaging God's truth is not just what we do here on Sunday mornings, though it is, where we go through the scriptures, Uh, But it's also, and I think probably more importantly, what you do when you leave here, which is to have your nose in the book and to engage with the Lord through His inspired Word uh, from day to day. So we engage God's truth. We don't rely on other grids of truth, but we say, God, you have truth, and we trust you, and so we engage in your truth. The second is to pursue life together, a favorite passage, uh, sorry, I'm going too fast. A favorite passage of mine is Hebrews chapter 10. And we often quote verses 24 and 25, which is saying, 
Do not forsake the assembling together of yourselves, um, but encourage one another, provoke one another, or encourage one another to love and good deeds. All the more as you see the day drawing near, the day of his return, his judgment and return. But prior to that verse, it talks about holding fast the confession of our faith. One of the great ways that we do that is to be in life together with one another, to encourage one another on in the truths that we, know, we do know, and to spur one another on to walk in those truths. And then the last is sharing hope in Christ. I think that's the needed and really inevitable outcome, is to take these things, and I do it three ways. I preach a lot of the, a lot of the time, I preach the gospel to myself. I need to preach the gospel to myself. I'm prone to sinking into some pits sometimes of, of wrong thinking, wrong processing. And so I need to remind myself of the hope that I have in Jesus. And then we sh- preach the gospel to one another, even those who have trusted in, the good new- in, in Jesus through the good news message. But we encourage one another and hold fast that confession together. And then finally, and inevitably and necessarily, we preach it and proclaim it to others. I've been using the word preach. I've just noticed as I've been saying it. Um, preaching is not a, just necessarily a pulpit exercise. It's an everyday exercise. It's really a proclaiming exercise. You're preachers. When you go to your places and you, 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 you proclaim things to others, you're, you're proclaiming truth to them. You're heralding out what God has written, what God has done. And so you share that hope in Christ. So that's who we are. That's what we do. How we do it is a statement of not necessarily tactics and operational steps. It's a statement of what is the spirit with which we do things? What is the mode of operation that we really have? And there are six things. There could be more, but these are the six that uh, we believe in the context of Fellowship Bible Church are most important for us. We dwell, we're dwelling in God's Word. Again, the, in John 15, it says, abide in my Word. The word abide means remain in, in, a, in a real basic sense. And so, remain in the Word. That's why when you hear me appeal to you and, and really exhort you to be in the Word every day, that's not sort of a made-up notion. This is really scriptural Uh, remain in my word. So we dwell in God's word. The second is walking in humility. We walk in humility. And so uh, as we go, we're humble before the Lord. We're humble with one another. Because really, uh, one of the passages in the New Testament says, what do we have that we have not been given? God has given us by his grace life. And so we walk in humility, recognizing um, this status. The third is we stand in grace. We're standing in grace. Romans 5 says, because we've been reconciled to God, if you will, we've been justified before him. We are standing in grace in Christ. And so we stand in grace. And that what a, what a wonderful reminder that not only do I stand in grace then, but I have the mindset of graciousness toward others. Fourth, we live by God's priorities. I've shared with you one of my favorite verses is 2 Corinthians 5, 9, which says, whether we are home or away, and by home, the Apostle Paul, when he writes that means with the Lord in his presence, like in heaven, or away, which means I'm still here on earth, either place, we make it our aim to please the Lord. So again, what a great grid to live life through, right? As I co- encounter my next decision in life, whatever yours is, whatever mine is, the rest of this day, the rest of this week, Lord, am I aiming to please you? Have I made it my aim to please you? Give me the strength to walk that out. The fifth is loving one another. We love because the Lord Jesus first loved us, and we are called to love one another. As a matter of fact, The Lord Jesus himself said, people will know that you are my followers because of your love for one another. They'll see see that. And then finally, 
we serve with purpose. And I think this is, again, sort of the inevitable outcome of these other five. As we do all these things, as we are, are how we do these things, the kind of the outcome becomes serving, serving one another. So that's who we are, what we do, how we do it. Before I jump into where we're going, let me lead us in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word, and I look forward to uh, being able to um, interact with, with the word today with, with my brothers and sisters and my friends here. And I just pray, Father, that by your spirit, you will illuminate truth, that you will uh, empower us to live by it, and then you will direct us in our steps as we go from this place. Guide us and direct us. So, Lord, um, we lift up the name of Jesus, the head of Fellowship Bible Church today, and we pray in and through his name. Amen. So the question before us for the, the rest of the time we have together this morning is, where are we going? We've talked about who we are, what we do, where, how we do it, but where are we going? Let me use an example of how I was guided by an ultimate destination just this past week. So by God, a few weeks before this past week, by God's grace, actually two weeks ago today, Lauren and I celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary. That's awesome. Praise God. And um, so... Um, as we couldn't get away right around that time, but we had an opportunity this past week to get away for an overnighter to Bentonville, Arkansas. And so we did that. We just did it up and had a fun time over there. We came back after nightfall on Friday as we were driving back. And do you all remember what it was like on Friday evening? Like swamp, Swampville, like rain, 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 rain. And it kept raining and raining and raining. And if you know me, and bless my wife, she was probably like, good thing we celebrated the anniversary because I am really at risk with him driving here. Um, I don't have super great night vision. Nobody's told me I can't drive at night yet, but we'll, we'll figure that out. But I don't have awesome night vision. And I don't like when it's raining. And I don't like when there's construction and I have to like be in the middle of two barricades and all that stuff. And I we live in a state, this is not a political statement, but good grief, we do not have a bunch of great lights at night on some of these roads of ours. So add all that up, and I'm like, like this, you know? But you know what kept me going? Was I knew where my final destination was. I literally was telling myself, I'm going home. I know where home is, and I know from here to there what the road is to get there. I just need to stay that course. And really, it just helped me because I knew my ultimate destination, what, where my ultimate destination was. And it was the guide for my path. It informed what I did miles away from it to get to there. Well, I wanted to start that same place in our spiritual path. Where are we going ultimately if we've trusted Jesus as Savior. And honestly, this passage I'm about to share with you talks about where everyone is going, whether those, whether those have trusted in Christ or not. And to do that, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 19. And I'm beginning from verse 1. Revelation 19, 1. The Apostle John is the writer here, so when it says, after this I heard, it's John saying something. He's got a vision going on of the future. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just. For he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. That's a pretty chilling last sentence, isn't it? Paul, when he shared with us during communion, he talked about the fact that God is just. Really, really, we want God to be just. We don't want a capricious or variable God who is subject to whim and, and movement. We want a God who's locked in and is absolutely just. Now, if we get on the wrong side of that adjustment, justice, that's a problem. And that's what we see right here is those who have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of the age, are being judged. 
uh, God is pouring out his righteous, just judgment upon the earth. It goes on to say, once more they cried out, hallelujah, the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne saying, amen, hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice saying, praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. So this is where, if you will, the world is going. All, uh, this is a picture of the end of time on this earth before God establishes his thousand-year kingdom here and before the new heavens and the new earth come after that, as we see in Revelation 21. So this is where things are going. Now, where are those who have trusted in Jesus Christ in this passage? Let's take a look at verse 6. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out, hallelujah, I told first service. It seems like hallelujah is like an important word for the end times. So we better get used to saying hallelujah. It's got an exclamation point on it at the end. So they're, I think they're like yelling it out. So, hey, let's practice. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Hey, that's pretty good. That's not bad. All right, keep going because this is going to happen, you know, in the future. Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns, right? Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. That's cool language. It's talking about a marriage and a bride and a lamb. If you remember in the book of Revelation, back to chapter 5, John has got a vision of this judgment that's about to occur, and it's bound up in some kind of a package, and he's despairing that no one can open the package that he sees. He can't detect anybody who's going to be able to open that package, and he knows that justice must be served. And then a lamb steps forward, and it's Jesus Christ. And that scene in Revelation 5 is worthy as the lamb who was slain. He's the one who can open the seals. And so at the end of time on this earth, the, there's going to be a party to end all parties with the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and it's going to be with his bride. And guess who the bride is? Ephesians 5 tells us it's the church. Those who have trusted Jesus as their Savior. It's not a building. It's not a campus. It's the people who have trusted him alone as Savior that bride, along with their bridegroom, Jesus, the lamb, are going to have a party to end all parties. And it was granted her, the bride, to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. So, this is where we're going. Even if the rain is going and the road is narrow and the road is dark, this is where history is going. And so, it's good for us to keep that in mind as we travel. And as we travel, I will tell you, it's going to be a journey of faith. Now, one of the delightful things to be, uh, in terms of being a preacher who believes that the Word of God is true and, and that you have a desire to give people the Word of God is that I don't have to work very hard to come up with fancy definitions of things. The Bible gives them to us oftentimes. This is an example. I don't have to define faith. It tells us what faith is. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I couldn't see my house at that point on that dark, rainy road, but I was sure hoping for it, and I knew where it was, and I was going in that direction. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it the people of old received their commendation. Now, verse 6 sort of brings us a little bit forward into his current reader, the, the writer to the Hebrews' current readers in that day, and I would propose that the, this is a statement to us as well. Without faith, 
it is impossible to please God. It's clear language. So we, we know what faith is, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So we are called in this passage to seek God in faith, to draw close to him, and, to, and that without faith, it's impossible to please God. After this verse, it goes on to give examples of those people of old who walked by faith in obedience to God. And then it says this in around verse, let's see, 13, in verse 13 through 16, these all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. I know where home is. I'm going there. It's my hope. I'm headed there. People who speak thus make it clear they're seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This is the walk of faith. I know where I'm going. I'm headed there. Lord, keep me on the path. Strengthen me for the journey. That's a walk of faith. And so, just to remind us, what is the destination? It's that marriage supper of the Lamb, ultimately. To see as many people as possible be invited to that table and to sit around that table of that marriage supper of the Lamb. And so now we move toward what we as a church are doing. And the head of our church, Jesus, gave us a a statement in Matthew chapter 9 that guides our steps this year for sure. Matthew 9, 36 through 38 says this, when Jesus, and I, I took the liberty of saying Jesus, the Lamb, just to remind us and to tie these things together. Jesus, when he walked on the earth the first time, isn't separate from who the lamb is in Revelation 5 and in Revelation 19. It's the same Jesus. So when Jesus, the lamb, who's got a party coming with a bride that he wants to have with him, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Man, this is a prayer I've started to take up in my own life. Lord, help me see people like you see them. And I know one of the ways you see them is you see them through a compassionate heart. And you see the harassment and the helplessness of their plight. As though they are sheep without a shepherd. Lord, help me see people in this way. And then he turns and he says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So this has been a guiding post for us for where we're headed in 2024. So just so you understand, the who we are is fixed. The what we do is basically fixed. The how we do it is is pretty much fixed. But the where we're going is, is always a product of those three, but it might change. Next year, we might say, Lord, as you've impressed upon our hearts at 5434 East 91st Street, in this context, in this time and space, we need to be about these activities to fulfill and, do, and, and, and accomplish the who we are, what we do, how we're doing it. So this is 2024 coming, and that this, this is... Um, This is the way we're going to equip our body down this path. I'll give you one more passage to kind of undergird our path, and it's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves of carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. 
Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So these last few phrases remind us that whatever I'm about to say about our path at FBC, it's an all It's an all-comers path here for this body. Come on, be a part of it. You've got a part to play. And so, for 2024, we are intentionally focused on equipping workers for the harvest. And to do that, we will develop and deploy the following equipping path. And let me just say, we've got some of these elements through the years, and we've had them in different ways, but... This is a 2024 path that God has laid on our hearts to put in place. We've got an elder named Joel Slaughter. You've probably, many of you may have met him, and he's been joined by a teammate named Nathan Cozart. Both of these guys have incredibly big brains who, who God has given them to process through process and milestones and how to put things together in such a way that we can map out a path that God shows us. And so they're working on this to kind of gather people along. So stay tuned. And so here here are the components of the path. The first is come and see. We want to invite people who are still asking questions about the faith, who may have defeater issues in their lives that they're saying, I can't trust God because of blank to be able to be open and honest and just go there and have a forum to discuss these things through a biblical grid. And so this will be a place primarily for people who are still asking questions and may not have yet come to the faith. And then as we've gone out and God has used us graciously to lead others to salvation, um, we need a place to bring people to learn and be equipped in the basics of the faith. And so both of these uh, experiences, the come and see and the basics of the faith, will probably be things that we want to have going year-round so that people can come into them at any given point, whether outside of the faith or new to the faith. The next, as people continue to grow, is to learn more and more about what his, his or her identity in Christ is. To, to understand that this has been a game changer for me. I am too prone to operate based on what others tell me my identity is. Or even, this is kind of even worse, for me to operate on what my faulty brain tells me my identity is. But instead, we operate in terms of who God says we are. So this will be an opportunity for all of us to get more equipped in who we are in Christ. And then coming out of that, perhaps maybe a little different format. It could be more of a gathering or invitation opportunity for various cohorts of people to come together to get equipped for specific servant leadership opportunities, both inside the body and outside of the body. And then throughout the year, as we've started this year, we're going to continue to have everyday evangelism opportunities. The basic path you heard Paul Hildebrand share with us this morning comes out of everyday evangelism. And so God has already been using that to great impact in our body and in our neighborhood where people have come to faith in Jesus Christ. It's awesome. And then we'll have some specific pathways for people who are engaged in small groups, care ministries, and students and children's ministries. I wanna just put a plug in right now for you if you're not in a small group engage in a small group. Paul Hildebrand is overseeing that ministry, and so you know what he looks like now. He's really not scary, I promise. And go tap him and ask him, how can I get engaged? Better yet, just mark on your card today, on your connection card, do you want to learn more about small groups? Here's what you're going to get when you do that. Isn't he nice too? You're going to get a call from Paul Hildebrand. He's going to say, I'm Paul Hildebrand. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about, let's, I need Alex to help me on my invitations there. Um, but let's talk about that. Let, how can I help? And then care ministries. These are these great ministries that God has brought to Fellowship Bible Church 
biblical counseling years ago, and then more recently, re-engage and regeneration, which both kicked back off again this week. Still not too late for any of you to engage in either of those. And then students and children's ministries. Um, Did you know that the greatest percentage of people among us, and we tend to forget these are people, but the, the kids and students, they're, they're every bit the people we are. We just don't happen to have as many of them in this room right now. That we, get, we get duped into our thinking that, that somehow there's like a dividing line. The kids of our, of, our, of our campus here on any given Sunday represent the greatest percentage of people who have yet to trust Jesus as their Savior. What a great opportunity to pour into the lives of kids or to pour into the lives of students as they courageously navigate the path forward that they're living in. And so just a tremendous opportunity for us to offer some targeted equipping in these areas. And then finally, every step of the way, all of this will be undergirded by prayer. And we're going to have people focused on praying throughout. Let me give you three more characteristics of of this equipping path. First is this. It's an immediate and ongoing participation scenario. Let me remind you of a story in the scriptures in Mark chapter 5. There was a man that lived in the region called the Gerasene region. He had so many demons that were possessing him that they called out to the Lord and said, we are legion because we are this many. Jesus took that legion of demons and he cast them out into a herd of pigs who ran off into the sea. They come back to the man and he's sitting there chill, like, I'm peaceful, I'm, I'm calm. And he says to the Lord, I want to come with you and your disciples. And the Lord says to him, no, I want you to go and tell your people what all the Lord has done for you. What a great reminder. One, we go where we are and we go where God has placed us. Secondly, God, Jesus basically just saved this man. And he says to him immediately, he doesn't say, you got to go through three classes at Fellowship Bible Church first before you're ready to do this. He says immediately, go tell people. So everywhere throughout this path, we're going to have a a go and tell part, a go and do part. It's never too early for anyone who has trusted Jesus as Savior to be about his business. Secondly, it's a head, heart, hands model. We're not only going to equip the mind where we reason and where we think and where we learn knowledge about these things, but we're going to We pray be used to impact the heart where our volition occurs. We make choices. We have the will going on and our our seat of our emotions. And then hands. So as our minds are equipped and our hearts are equipped, our prayer, like James says, is that we will not just be hearers of the word, but doers. We'll move out with our hands, our feet, our mouths into the path. And our, our, our experiences of equipping will have a head, heart, hands grid. So it won't just be we're trying to peddle a bunch of knowledge. It won't be that we're just trying to grip you in your heart. It'll be yes and yes to both of those. And what are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? And then finally, continuous multiplication. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2, The things that you have seen and heard from me in the presence of faithful witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Do you see the progression? Paul was doing what he does, pouring in to faithful men, and they were able to teach others also. So it's a generational multiplying ministry. And that's what this will be all about as well. I can't wait to see it in action, to experience it in action. I'm, I'm ready to get going. So I will probably not get going with it, though, for another three and a half months. Uh, those of you who have heard, been around and heard know that uh, February 1st, which is this Thursday, I'm going to start a three-month sabbatical. And my first uh, scheduled um, 
sermon back in the pulpit will be on May the 19th. I think that's about 15 Sundays from now. So um, I would leave you with this. This is, this is my little parting message, and I'm not smart enough to come up with my own. So here's a follow-on from Hebrews chapter 11. And it's found in Hebrews chapter 12. And this is me talking to you, Fellowship Bible Church. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we're not the first to have gone down this path, by the way. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Fellowship Bible Church, who we are is defined pretty well. What we do is defined pretty well. How we do it is defined pretty well. And where we're going is defined pretty well. But keep going, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the head of this church. Run with endurance the race that is set before us. And consider him who had a hard road, even to the death. He, consi- he endured hostility from sinners so that we won't grow weary or faint-hearted. The storms are going to be out. The road's going to be narrow. It's going to be dark at times. But home is where we're going. Keep running the race, FBC. Keep running the race. Fix your eyes on our head, Jesus Christ. Let's take out our connection cards. And uh, sorry, Victoria, I'm going to get one from you. Um, there's four items. We were, we've been building these out um, throughout this series. So here they are. The first is, pray with me that I will pray for Fellowship Bible Church. Wherever you place that card that we shared with you today, use that as a prayer card to remind yourself to pray for the church. The second is, to participate in the mission of FBC. Find your place, what every joint supplies. So you've got, a, you've got a role to play. You need me, I need you. So participate in the mission. The third is proclaim the blessings of Fellowship Bible Church. Invite people to come and see here. This is a unique place every church is that is truly following Jesus because it's his body. And we do things according to his way. And when we, people see us loving one another according to the love with which he first loved us, they will know that we are his followers. What a great testimony that will be. So proclaim the blessings, invite people to come. And then finally, coming out of today's, propagate as part of God's growth of Fellowship Bible Church. As we equip along this path, you come, you get equipped, you pour into others, they get equipped, they pour into others, they get equipped, and so on, and so on, and so on. All right, let's take a moment to fill these out. We're gonna have the guys come in a moment and receive the offering. Let's, let's just get all the cards from the room in there today. So fill yours out and we'll pray for you tomorrow. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's complete these together. FBC, I love you. God bless you. Amen.